Oh, my neck. Hey guys, what is up? I am back and the pallet shower is with me. So it's been about five and a half, six months since we did the last video on the pallet shower, but the pallet shower has been on quite a journey in that amount of time. It is actually been relocated from California to Arizona where it is right now. I had to disassemble the whole thing and reassemble it and it's still working like a champ. So it looks like the video about five and a half, six months ago was really well received and it has a lot of comments, a lot of views. And the number one question I've gotten is what sort of improvements would you make or did you make after the video? So I thought I would do a follow-up video here and show you what sort of improvements I've made. And if I can think of anything else I'd like to do, I'll, I'll let you know, but I've made a lot of those improvements. I'll also maybe talk about some parts of the pallet shower in detail where I didn't really go into that before, especially the portion underneath that it drains into. I'll kind of show you how that works. So you got a little bit more detail on that, but yeah, should be a cool video. So hang in there. You can jump anywhere in the video you like, but we're gonna start off with improvements. Hey guys, all right, so first improvement we made here is we stabilized the shower head. If you remember from the last video when we put the shower head in, we literally just drilled a hole right through the fiberglass, stuck the pipe in there, and it just kind of balanced. Now that's not ideal for, you know, if you wanted to hang a shower rack on it or anything like that, or, you know, it just doesn't keep the shower head in place that well. It was fine for the time being, but we wanted to get a little bit more rock solid. So here's what we did. I'll, I'll pull this back a little bit. We used a lock washer and a regular washer and we spun it all the way up the pipe as far as we could go, as far as the threads go to lock that in place. And then we ran it through the fiberglass just like usual. And then here's the back side. The back side we added a coupler. If I said that wrong, I will correct it here on the screen, but we added this gray plastic coupler and then we connected the hose with a few adapters to that coupler. Now the pipe, which you saw earlier, this pipe on the front runs directly into that coupler. So that takes up the slack between the fiberglass and the lock washer and keeps a nice tight fit on that shower head. So that was, so that was improvement number one. Okay, improvement number two. Uh, we had a little bit of a leak. And it was because I bought a cheap hose and it got a little pinched. And so we had a little bit of a leak. So improvement number two, we improved the hose. And we used a annex hose, a hose that goes between the two hoses to join them together. Now you don't have to do that. You can do a little heavy duty hose if you want to, but we were only trying to span like a 10 foot distance. So we just use a nice short hose that was heavy duty. And this is what it looks like. And this is what it looks like attached to the back. Now, like I said, this is a heavy duty hose. So it's a little stronger, it should last. It's short, it's only about 10 feet. You could go with a longer hose if you wanted to. But this little curved black supporting portion of the hose keeps it from kinking and bending. And it's been really great so far because it keeps that kink out of there that causes the bulge and then I think caused the failure in the original hose. So I would look for a heavy duty hose with that sort of attachment near the um, area where it th would thread into the uh, back of the shower. So that's improvement number two. All right, so improvement number three. Now this improvement went beyond my skill set. I had to have my buddy's dad do this. You could probably have a plumber do it, but I'll show you what we got going up here in the warehouse. Now this was in the new warehouse already. It is a small water heater, very small. It's about a quarter of the size of a regular water heater. Now, what he did is he patched into this using this Shark PEX tube uh, that can be found at Lowe's Home Depot. Uh, he used a red for hot and a blue for cold. 
and then he ran it down here and he made a little faucet for me so it's got a hot cold <clears throat> so it's got a hot side and a cold side and then it's got a master valve in the middle so if you get it right where you like it you can go ahead and just twist that valve and that will open it up and the water will run all the way over to the shower head over there so that was a big improvement because man it was cold shower wise in california during the winter i don't think i'll have that problem in arizona but uh, man if it does get cold it's going to be nice to take some hot showers so that was a major improvement and like i said that was beyond my skill set that took a um my buddy's dad um you know you could get a plumber involved to probably do that but like i said we just used this temporary plex plastic tube and it's doing a great job so far so if you guys remember the shower drains into a 48 gallon barker tote along tank so it drains from the top all the way down through a little pvc pipe here in the pallet and then down into this tank and it drains right into the top this tank actually ended up failing on me or at least the old tank did i used all kinds of flex seal to try and fix the problem but man as you can tell by the photo it did not work so this is a brand new tank now right before i got the new tank i got this it is a little snap-on gauge that goes on the top of this that tells you how full the tank is now when i got my original tank it didn't have this thing right here but the new tank came with it so i had ordered it separately so now i've got a backup but anyways the way this works is as the tank fills up with water this little red stopper goes up to the top and when it reaches the very top your tank's full so that is something i added earlier but it was nice to see it comes with the new barker totes um, and it's been great man because you know when you are full of water and when to take it out and uh, that was the last and final improvement that i've made so the next things we'll talk about is just kind of some of the pallet shower in detail and really probably what i'm going to go over um, is really kind of how the bottom works how this tote drains and also how the water is connected to the top of the tote so that way you can move it out and empty it without having to you know detach pipe and all kinds of crazy stuff so i'll show you how i do that because i think that that would be something kind of handy for you guys to know and uh and you don't have to figure it out on your own all right so i want to show you one part here real quick before we go underneath and i show you how the shower is connected to the barker tote this piece right here is what i use to connect the two now i didn't use the entire thing i actually cut it right here and what this is is this is the waste disposal hose it comes with the barker tote and it's used to transport waste from an rv into the top of the tote so what i did and i'll show you this when we get underneath is i cut the hose right here and what that let me do is that let me just use part of it it lets me create a, a nice tight seal on top of the barker tote and then it gives me a flexible top so that way i can feed the pvc into the flexible top and so the pvc doesn't need to go all the way down into the tote and you'll see this when i get underneath it just goes right into the sleeve here and it guides the water in because it's around the pvc pipe and then this tight fit around the top keeps it from leaking so nothing leaks at all but i wanted to show you this hose in its entirety and like i said it comes with the barker tote all right here we are underneath the pallet shower you can see the pvc pipe up here and it basically just does kind of a eh, comes down from the top and makes kind of an l and comes over here and drops in and here is that piece that i was telling you about so like I said, the PVC pipe just slips directly on the top of it. This just kind of guides it into the tank and it creates a nice tight seal on top. So when I want to remove this and it's full, all I do is I give this a twist right here and I lift it up and then I roll the tank forward and then I just take it off the back 
And that's the piece right there. That's what it looks like in all its glory. But that's just how I attach it and detach it and get it in and out without having to run PVC into the top of this hole at the top. You can imagine if I had to do that, kind of what a nightmare that would be uh, trying to get this in and out. So that's what makes it slip in and out real quick. And that's what gives it its nice tight seal to guide the water in. All right, so I just showed you how to detach it from the shower. Now I'm gonna show you kind of how it pulls out when you need to empty it. So you just grab by the handle, give it a pull since it's already detached. And you can see right there on top, that's where the water drains in from the shower. I just go ahead and put this on and cap it like that. And then I just, you know, pull it and roll it wherever I want to. And then when I'm ready to drain it on the side here, it's got that same cap and then it's got this little lever here. And so when you're ready to drain it, you just take it to wherever you want to drain it, unscrew the cap, and then you pull this upwards. That little chute will open up the tank and then you'll let it drain. And then just to drain it all the way out, once you get it out there, you can go ahead and unscrew this and take this off and that will release the air pressure so that it drains even faster. But that's how easy it is. I mean, it's been great. And like I said, other than that fail on the last tank, it's been a great tank and so far an awesome design. All right, guys, I hope you liked that video. I put my heart and soul into it. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow it. Uh, if there's anything that I forgot, list it in the comments. I'll take a look at them. Uh, if I need to do a third follow-up video, I'm happy to. Just let me know. Or if you have made any improvements yourself that I didn't think of, I would love to hear it. But yeah, all right, guys. Like I said, like, subscribe. Let's do this. Talk to you later.